yes hello and welcome back so i hope you have seen my uh, videos on the first three chapters that i have given uh, introduction to economics uh, basic economic entities and the third chapter that we have done was uh, that is basic problems of an economy so today we are going to start with the fourth chapter and the title of the chapter is types of econo economies and when we use the word economy i hope i have told you earlier also we mean the different economic system that existed in the different countries of the world so india is a country and it works with a different economic pattern or economic system so that is what indian economy is so us is a country that works with a different economic policies and system so that is a us economy so all the country uh, are nothing but they work with their own economic policies and the system and hence they can be called as Indian economy, US economy, Australian e economy, European economy and so on. So today what we are going to do in this chapter, we are first going to understand that how these economy of the world can be grouped. So we can group them into some broad uh, uh, categories. So that is what we are going to learn in this chapter. And uh, so let us start with the chapter and find out that how we can do this. So as you can see on the first slide, I'm showing you that how these, these economy can be grouped. So according to the, the, this concept, we can group the economies of the world into two broad classification. One is ownership of means of production and the second is level of development. So here ownership of means of production means uh, that uh, how the factors of productions are distributed or who is the owner of the factors of production. I hope you remember I told that every economy uh, has to produce good and when they produce good the question is how they produce good. They produce good with the help of factors of production. These factors of productions are known as means of productions. I told you earlier that means of productions are four. So there are four important factors of production that is utilized in order to produce any good. So that are land, labor, capital and organization. So these four factors of production that is land, labor, capital, organization is also known as means of production. Now the question is who own the own these uh, factors of production. So we are going to classify the different economies on the category or on the basis of ownership that who owns the means of production. Next what we can talk we can say uh, we can also classify these economy on the basis of level of development in that economy. You know very well we sometimes say that US is more developed than India. So on what ground we are saying that the USA is more developed than India. So on the basis of the development that how much development has taken place uh, in the countries in the different countries of the world that is a uh, again second important uh, line or second important thing on which we can uh, classify the different economies of the world so what we are going to learn here in this chapter we are going to learn here to divide the different economies of the world or to group the different economies of the world on the basis of ownership of means of production and on the basis of label of development so these are our two important classes let us let us learn so as you can see here so the title of the this slide is classification of the economy on the basis of means of production so if we want to group the economies of the world in uh, with respect to the ownership of means of production then we can group them into three broad headings and these are capitalist economy socialist economy and the third is mixed economy so we have a three different broad classifications and let us first understand what are uh, these economy uh, these are nothing but what we find that there are some countries of this world that have a very similar type of characteristics and very similar type of features. So their features and their characteristics are very similar and hence we can classify them into a one group. So on that ground we can say that the economies are classified as capitalist economy. So what you are going to see, you are going to see that there are some countries of the world whose uh, economic system and the economic policy are very similar. So they are called capitalist. There is a, another set of uh, uh, ec economies where their economic policy and their economic system are similar. So we have classified them as socialist economy and the third one that is mixed economy. So let us first understand these economies. Uh, 
So you can see here the first category is capitalist economy and uh, what are capitalist economy? We say like this that capitalist economy is a type of economy where the means of production are owned by private people. So this is the main uh, main uh, point here that capitalist economy. So there are some countries where we find that the means of production are completely owned by the private people private peoples whereas we find that there are some countries of the world where the means of production that is the land labor and capital are not owned by the private peoples but it is owned by the whole community that means it is owned by the uh, government of that uh, country so that this type of economy where the means of production are owned by the socialist uh, means of production are owned by the government is called socialist economy and finally what we have is the third category that is called mixed economy we say that these are the type of economies or these are the country where the means of production are not or not entirely owned by the private individual not entirely owned by the government but it is owned in the uh, mixture of uh, that is private and the government so this type of economy where the means of production is uh, owned by both private as well as by the government is called mixed economy so i hope now you are getting that what is the difference between this capitalist economy socialist economy and mixed economy again i am repeating this i i said that there are some countries that can be grouped uh, under a capitalist economy uh, with a common characteristics or common feature that is the means of production in these economy is owned by the private people the government the government does not own any uh, means of production whereas there are some countries where we find that the means of production are owned by the uh, whole community that means the by the government and there are uh, another set of countries where the means of production is hold by the private people also and by the government also so such type of economy is called mixed economy so this is the first uh, fee, uh, first classification or i may say the first point on which i can group the economy different economies of the world into these three heading similarly if we go for some more points then we can say that capitalist economy is also a uh, that type of economy where the peoples are guided by the self interest and the profit motive what we find that these type of economy whom uh, where we are grouping the countries of the world into a capitalist economy we generally see that here the people are very much profit oriented so the uh, w uh, the economic activity that we see in these type of country are generally done for the profit motive so we find there is a lack of there is a lack of social welfareness among them but this uh, characteristics that is the social welfareness is something that we find in a different set of set of group of uh, countries and they are called socialist economy you can see very well i'm pointing out with my pointer that economic economic activity in a socialist economy are guided by a social welfare objective whereas the economic activities in a capitalist economy is guided by a profit motive so this creates the second point of difference between capitalist economy and the socialist economy so again i repeat i only mean to say that the group of countries have some different characteristics and on the basis of those features and characteristics we have classified them into capitalist socialist and uh, mixed economy because they share some very similar and common characteristics so as i was telling that in capitalist economy profit motive is the uh, basic objective behind any economic activity whereas in socialist economy the as the entire means of production is owned by the government so here the government is basically focused with the welfare of the people so welfare is the main objective behind all economic activity uh, whereas in a mixed economy we see a blend of both where we see that since the means of production is owned by both the private and the uh, government we find that among the private there is a object economic activity is guided by profit whereas among the government the economic activity is guided by the welfare so we find here a mixture of uh, capitalist a mixture of feature of capitalist economy as well as the uh, feature of socialist economy right so this bring us a second point of difference between a capitalist economy and a, a socialist economy and mixed economy economy if we talk uh, talk something more on this type of economy then i can also talk on the third point where where we see that capitalist economy has a one very common features and the characteristics and that is they are also known as free economy or laissez faire economy 
laissez faire laissez faire means we generally see that these type of economy that can be grouped under capitalist economy they uh, they are the type of economy where the government generally do not interfere in the economic activity of the country the government does not interfere at all we find that the private individuals are left free to do the economic activity and the government only look after the so uh, look after the security of the country and they do not interfere in the economic activity so this is a, another important characteristics uh, that we see in some group uh, of countries and so they they comes under a, uh, a common uh, heading or the common group that is capitalist economy whereas in socialist economy we do not see this in socialist economy the situation is completely different in socialist economy we see that the this type of economy is completely uh, guided by the government and the government government interfere in each and every actually does not only interfere the government do all type of economic activity so that is what so this makes the second point of difference that is the third point of difference between the capitalist and the socialist uh, saying that in capitalist economy uh, the laissez faire uh, economy that is uh, also known as capitalist economy the government do not interfere in the economic activity and here in socialist economy all type of economic activity is taken by the government so that makes the third point of difference whereas if i talk about mixed economy as i was telling that mixed economy is a economy since the it is owned by both the private and the government we find that here the government uh, the uh, regulate or the government control the economic activity of the private individual by using some direct and indirect controls direct controls can be a price control and indirect control can be a licensing policy so there can, there are various uh, techniques by which the government in a mixed economy controls the uh, economic activity of the private individual so that the private individual does not exploit the economy and how do the government do this the government do by uh, introducing or by uh, adopting some type of techniques and the method and these techniques and the method are called direct control and indirect control under direct control we talk about price control and under indirect control we talk about uh, taxation so these are the few uh, techniques by which the government in a mixed economy can control the activity of the private individual so that like this is what we are talking here so i hope now you are getting my point where i just want to tell that uh, when we want to uh, group the different countries or different economies into the uh, into the different groups on the basis of their ownership of means of production that who owns the factors of production then we can classify them into three heading that is capitalist economy mixed economy and socialist economy so this is the three classification that we have if if we go for some examples then you can very well see here that uh, examples of capitalist economy because this type of uh, features in the different countries of the world was seen during the industrial revolution of england and that was the time duration 1760 to 1820 so during this time during this time we have seen that there emerged some of the countries that have followed this type of characteristics or this type of features and they have been called as a capitalist economy we have seen the economies uh, during this time the economies of uk was a example of a capitalist uh, economy that is the united kingdom usa united state of america that was also a, uh, also a capitalist economy japan france germany etc so in one way or other i can say that in the present time all the developed countries of the world because we know very well that uk usa japan france germany these are nothing but they are they are the developed countries of the world in the present so in one way i can say that these countries were in their past was uh, following the capitalist economy system they used to follow the capitalist economy system where the private individuals were uh, let them uh, where the private individu individuals were left free to uh, own the means of production and uh, they were completely guided by the profit motive and the government does not uh, they do not use to interfere in the economic activity again i am saying that this type of economy existed during this time period in the history and some examples are uk usa japan france and germany 
whereas we have seen that the socialist type of economy if we go for the examples of the socialist type of economy then we have seen the first country to have this type of economic system was a soviet uh, russia that is soviet union and now we call it russia was the first country to have this type of economy based on the economic principles of Karl Marx and hence they are also known as uh, Marxian economy or the Ma Marxian principle and some more examples of socialist economy uh, that was that existed in the history is China. China was an example of a socialist economy, Vietnam, uh, Poland, Cuba, East Germany and like this. So they uh, these are the two sets of uh, econo economy that we find that is capitalist and the socialist economy. If we want to go for the examples of mixed economy then we have to first understand and the two further classification of mixed economy. So the point that I told here, you can see here, there are the two further classification. So mixed economy is not that uh, only only that is the where the government do not, government and both the private indi individual uh, do the economic activity. But you can classify this mixed economy into two types. One is called mixed capitalist system and the other is simply called mixed economy. So when we are talking about mixed capitalist system, you can see here I'm using the word mixed also and we are using the word here capitalist also. So what we see that this type of mixed economy where the means of production uh, uh, are in the ownership of private individual and the government indirectly uh, intervene through the price control licensing method control over the import examples are UK, USA etc. So if you look into the present scenario then you will find that a, a country like USA, country like UK are the example of mixed capitalist system. Why we say that they are the example of mixed capitalist system? Of course, here the here what we see that the means of production are actually owned by the private individuals or the private entrepreneur, but the government can intervene. If you look what we have what I have told earlier that capitalist economy is economy where the means of production is owned by the private individual and the government do not interfere. The government does not, means they do not, uh, and hence they are called laissez faire economy because the government do not use to uh, interfere in the economic activity. And now what we see that this type of economy, it is yes, of course, the, or, or the ownership is uh, with the private individuals, but the government can intervene uh, to, the, to their economic activity through some type of controls. These are nothing but these are the control that the government can impose a control or restriction on the price of the commodity. The government can uh, imp uh, impose the restriction on the uh, firm or the industry through the licensing system. If they do not uh, allow the license, if they do not give the license, the industry or the firm cannot operate. Similarly, there are many types of control that the government can uh, exercise in order to keep these private firms uh, under their control. So that is what we see. So here we see that both the government and the private ind individuals interfere. So they are called, uh, that is a mixed capitalist system. Government is not producing anything. It is only the private individual, but government control them. We have uh, another category here that is a, a simply mixed economy. Uh, we see that this type of economy is an economy where the government do not uh, just interfere through different type of price control as you can see in the mixed capitalist system. But in this case, the government also involved themselves in the production of the commodity. So what is the basic difference between the mixed capitalist system and the mixed economy? In mixed capitalist system, we see that the government is not directly involving themselves in the production of any goods. But here in mixed economy, we see that the government also involved themselves in the production of uh, co commodities and the good. So that makes the difference. Control in both the economy, the control is practiced by the government. But here the government also participate in the production of the good. And the example of this type of economy is India, Sri Lanka and so on. That is most of the Asian economy you are going to find that they follow the mixed economy system where the government also produces goods and service for us. And uh, as you know, the private individual produce with a profit motive, whereas the government produce with the social welfare. So hope you have understood the difference or uh, that how we have classified the different economies of the world on what uh, basis into capitalist economy, socialist economy and mixed economy, right? So we, uh, the first slide, let me again uh, come back to the first slide as I was telling that I'll help you out to uh, 
classify or uh, categorize or group these economy that is the different economies of the world on the basis of ownership of means of production and we have learned that uh, on the basis of ownership of means of production we can classify these economy into capitalist socialist and mixed economy next we have here is a level of development so how these economy so it is not necessary that the capitalist economy cannot be a developed economy or a cap so that is a, a mixed economy cannot be a developed economy so what we are going to do here we are going to classify all the economies under uh, uh, on the basis of level of development so we will try to find out that how we can classify this economy on the level of development you can see on the screen uh, so we can classify them into three categories the categories are developed economies underdeveloped economies and developing economies so we have a three uh, again three classification uh, of these economy or the we can group these economy into three uh, headings that is developed economy developing economy and underdeveloped economy but uh, we are not uh, going to discuss anything about the uh, developing economy because in this chapter we are going to assume that the developing economy and the underdeveloped economies share dif uh, same type of characteristics so we when we are talking about underdeveloped economy please you take into uh, consideration that underdeveloped and the developing economies comes into the same heading right okay let us now understand so we see that there are some countries of the world that can be grouped under uh, a heading of developed economy why we say that they are developed economy on what ground we say that they are developed economy we say that they are developed economy because the per capita income level of their country is very high and at the same time the standard of living of their country is very high the standard of living of the people in their country is very high I'll help you out to understand what is per capita income but I hope I have also explained what is per capita income in some of my previous video but still I'll again explain this concept here also but let us first come to the point standard of living. Uh, you can um, say very well of your own that the standard of living of the people in our country and the standard of living of the people in USA and UK is very different is very different why we are why sometimes we we hear uh, that uh, people say that the standard of living of the people in USA is more than the people uh, standard of living of the people in India it's only because they are rich and we are not uh, as rich as them so that makes the difference in the standard of living so how rich the country is the that is represented by by their standard of living and this reach that how rich the country is is actually represented by the per, per capita income of the country per capita income and how we calculate to be simple where the per capita income is calculated by a simple method that is how much income uh, that economy is generating divided by the population of the economy so sometimes we also say that per capita income is calculated as national income by population so national income is nothing but it is the sum total of the income that is generated or the sum total of the goods and service that is generated in the economy divided by the population for example suppose i'll help you out to uh, understand that uh, how the calculation of per capita income is done so as you know that economic activity of uh, any economy is classified into three heading that is primary activity secondary activity and tertiary activity i told earlier also that primary activities are those activity which is related to agriculture secondary activity are the activity that is related to industries and construction and tertiary activity is related to service like service of a doctor service of a teacher so we come under a tertiary activity what type of activity we do we teachers we do tertiary activity whereas the people those who are producing clothes the people those who are producing uh, machine tools and machinery they work in industry and so their activity is categorized as secondary activity and we have a primary activity that is the farmers who grow crops for us or the fisherman uh, who is actually uh, doing the fishing activity so they comes under a uh, that is your they comes under a, a primary activity now the point is uh, i have to first uh, get to know what is the total income that is generated in all these three activity so the people those who are working in primary activity they uh, they generate goods and the service uh, people in the secondary activity they also generate goods and service and the people in tertiary they also generate the uh, some service so what we do we multiply the these goods that is produced in the economy and the service produced in the economy with the price and we get a very big figure that big figure is nothing but is called national income of the economy 
for example suppose in a small economy is there where or two pens are produced only two pens and the price of the pen each is 10 so 10 into 2 20 so therefore the total value that economy has generated uh, is 20 so in the same manner so the value that is generated in the primary sector uh, secondary sector and tertiary sector is multiplied by their uh, actually the commodities are multiplied by their price and we get a very big figure that is called national income what we do, we divide by the population so as to find out that what, what is the uh, average income of each and every people in our economy. So when we divide by population, the figure that we get is called per capita income. So suppose if national income is 100 and the population of the country is 10, so 100 by 10 means 10. So 100 by 10 means 10, that means each and every people is earning 10 rupees. So we assume like this. So that is what a concept of per capita income. So we say that some countries of the world, they are called or they are classified as a developed economy because their per capita income is very high and at the same time, the standard of living of the people is also very high. So this is what and according and uh, another feature that we see in this type of country that are classified as a developed economy that the people in this type of economy they are gen they generally work in an industrial sector and in the tertiary sector. There are very less number of the people those who work for uh, in the primary sector. So if I talk about say USA and UK, uh, approx data I can give you where we say that only 1% of the population or 2% of the population of that country works in the agricultural sector. The rest all the population of these type of country work in secondary or tertiary sector. Whereas, we are, okay, so that is what and according to the data of World Bank, you can see very well that it is told that the, the developed countries are the countries whose per capita income is uh, around $14,476 or even more and examples USA, Canada, England, Japan, Germany and all. So that is what uh, the point of developed economy. And if we go to talk about underdeveloped economy or developing economy, we say that these type of economies, that is the group of countries, those who can brought under the heading of underdeveloped or developing economy, they are the countries with low per capita income. Their average income, the average income of the people in these countries is very less. And that is why we say that there is a low per capita income and low standard of living. So the standard of living is also low because the because of the low per capita income. Another point that we can say that uh, in underdeveloped countries, people are generally involved in a or majority of the population is involved in a primary activity that is in the cultivations or in the farming activity. Whereas uh, according to the World Bank report, it is told that underdeveloped countries, sorry, here by mistake it is written underdeveloped, I'll write here underdeveloped countries, we find the per capita income is around $1,025 or even less. So you just see the difference. If you look into the difference, you can find that for a developed country, the average income of every people, average income of the people is around $14,476 or even more. And here we can see that the uh, income, average income is only $1,025. So if you see the difference, then there is a difference of around 13,000. 13,000 is the difference. So that makes uh, make a quite... Uh, clear that uh, why we say that the standard of living of the people in a developed country is very high whereas the standard of living of the people in underdeveloped country is very low. I hope now you are getting my point and some examples of underdeveloped countries are what Sri Lanka, uh, Brazil, uh, Burma so like this there are many examples uh, if we talk about our economy that is the Indian economy so it is being seen that presently we are not uh, an underdeveloped economy but we have come uh, across that uh, underdeveloped level and now we are uh, in a situation of developing economy so we are uh, india is a country with a developing stage so we are we comes under a developing stage whose per capita income is little uh, higher than uh, this that is 1225 dollar so this may bring us uh, to the end of uh, this video today uh, I'll continue further uh, in some more videos where I am going to tell you about uh, some more features of capitalist economy, socialist economy and mixed economy, their merits and demerits. And similarly, we are also going to talk about some more features on developed economies and underdeveloped economies, their merits and demerits. So this is what we are going to do in some more uh, videos. But uh, right now, just a small uh, quick revision of what we have done today. So we have seen that how we can classify the economy on the basis of means of 
of production and on the basis of level of development. Then we have seen that means of production, we can classify the economy as capitalist, socialist and mixed economy. And on the basis of level of development, we can classify the economy as a developed economy and underdeveloped economy. Right. And I told you what is the basic difference here per capita income, then standard of living. So these are the few basic difference. And in some more video, we will come to know about more difference between developed economies and underdeveloped economies. So please, you all go through this video, uh, see this video again and again, uh, prepare some note of your own uh, practice exercise uh, question answers. And in case you are having a doubt with any topic or any concept or any uh, line from your book, when we are going to meet in the class, we will have a discussion on that. Thank you.